Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chuck Roscoe with the Cyber Corporation. I'm joined with Mr. Ken Hunter. Ken? Hi. Say hello to the folks. Yep, Ken is one of our main tech support guys. Um, and I appreciate everybody taking the time to, to meet with us. It's going to be uh, 30 minutes. Of, luckily for you, it'll be mostly Ken talking and not me. Uh, we have to put up with me for just a, a minute or two. Um, and we will start and probably just let a few more people join. I see them jumping in. And we'll go through some of the housekeeping items. And we'll get started. Um, as a reminder, you folks uh, going to the Manhattan uh, Momentum Show out in Phoenix. Cybra will be out there. Actually, I'll be out there along with Aaron Kennedy. Uh, well, you can stop by. We have a, a little booth or a little pod. We're more than happy to, well, we'd love to to, to meet you and and uh, talk about Mark Magic and things that, that you guys are doing in your businesses and how we can help. So please stop by. If nothing else, we have a couple giveaways. So, you know, we can hook you up with some free stuff. So that's always, that's always a crowd pleaser. All right, let's get started. Again, Chuck Roscoe with Cyber. I appreciate everybody from Manhattan or the Manhattan Associates accounts joining Ken and myself uh, today. Um, just as far as the housekeeping type stuff, we will be recording this, which I hate to even say because now I know it's like, oh wow, you know, maybe I don't have to, I don't have to sit in. I'll just get the recording from Chuck, you know, later today or tomorrow. Meanwhile, I would love everybody to stay on and please, please, please ask some questions. There is that questions uh, like tab you'll see in the GoTo uh, webinar. You can ask questions at any time, um, and we'll try to answer them throughout the webinar. Again, it was only 30 minutes, and if not, we will get back to you afterwards with answers to your questions. Okay. So as far as what we're covering today, um, it's it's pretty funny because a lot of you know, I don't want to freak you out, but a lot of this has been around for a really long time. I mean, it's not like necessarily new development, which is a good thing because you actually have most of you already have this. The, the, what, what Ken and I are about to show you, and you actually start using it. So, um, just as an overview, as far as Cyber and Mark Magic and the, the Manhattan Associates accounts, it's kind of wild because uh, Cyber has other what we call ASVs, like Manhattan Associates, did a great job of integrating Mark Magic within their packages. We have other software companies that have done that as well. But Manhattan, I mean, they have this this breadth of packages. So we got WMI, which is our Mark Magic like AS400 version. We have WMOS, uh, which they did a great job of integrating, which is really our Mark Magic PI uh, version, platform independent, which is all Java, nothing to do with the AS400. Uh, and then there's uh, we're actually seeing some newer accounts or newer for us uh, scale accounts, which are all .NET, and they're actually using Mark Magic PI. So we have you know towards the end of this, we're going to talk a little bit about scale. And what actually one account, how they integrated Mark Magic with it, but that's something that everyone can kind of use when we get to that piece. So let's start with the first topic here, and I'm just going to give an overview of all these things, and I'll quickly give it to Ken, and he's actually going to show all this in action. So what just happened to my screen? What is all this stuff on the left? These are all the, probably not even all the formats, but Manhattan has already created hundreds and hundreds of formats for you guys within Mark Magic. <laughs> that you guys probably print and use every single day. And I'm sure you know you can PDF these these uh, uh, labels, you can email them as PDFs and all that other stuff or go to all these different printers. We've seen a few accounts um, recently when it comes to uh, like e-commerce uh, type labeling or direct to consumer where Sato has a printer. So Zebra is a printer manufacturer, Sato is another printer manufacturer, there's Intermec, there's Avery. But we're picking on the Sato one for today's webinar, at least for the first part of it, because they have a neat one. It's called the GY412, and it's actually a duplex thermal printer where it prints on the front and the back of the label. And the Sato printer, which I'll show a picture of it in a second, uses a totally different language than Zebra. So, but what we wanted to make sure you guys knew is that you guys are poised to use other technology like the Sato duplex printer totally based off the Zebra labels that you already have without writing any code or making any changes. So the labels that you already have, Ken's gonna show you how you can actually copy them from a Zebra driver over to this Sato driver uh, and actually print on the front and the back. So you may be asking yourself, okay, what's so great about printing on the front and the back of a label? So if you see this little animation, hopefully it looks okay on your screen. Um, you actually have a 
shipping label, and then you can have a carton content label actually on the back of the la of that label itself. Um, so you, it could be a packing list. So you, right now you may be printing two different uh, labels, a shipping label on your zebra printer, sticking it on the box and printing out a laser form, folding it up and putting it in a pouch and putting in those little things on the side. Um, you can actually do all that at once with this auto printer uh, and using Mark Magic, obviously, again, without any code. So just uh, another picture of this. Um, this is what the printer looks like, actually, and we actually will we'll send you guys. We have some really cool videos of it in action, which we'll make sure we send out to you, to all you folks. And it's really so the printer itself is really neat because it actually has a thermal print head on the top and the bottom, so it can print on the front and the back. Um, and also the stock is really neat. And we've been partners with Sato actually since the very beginning of this printer when it came out. I think it was 2010. Cyber was actually the first ones to add a driver, I think, for this for the Sato printer. And you guys already have like that installed on your systems. Um, so the stock is pretty neat where it's a little extra wide and it allows the printing on the back. Um, and this is just kind of showing, you know, the, the, the front and then the back and how you can then peel it off the back. Uh, but again, Ken will show you how you can take a Zebra one and, and turn that into a Sato enabled duplex. Speaking of duplex, okay, great, Chuck. You know, so I'm printing these uh, Zebra printer, these, these labels out now, you know, one at a time. How, how do I tell Mark Magic to print it on the back? Well, it's really simple, actually. We have this little parameter, and this is like on the, the PI side, called duplex. And you just say yes. So on the AS400 side, here it is. You know, this is what the parameters look like. So this is something that it's been there all along. I ignored it. I ignore it most of the time because you just you just leave the default as no because you just want to print, and the printer can only handle you know printing on one side anyway, unless it's a laser printer, right? Because we could print on the back of those. You would use this command here, uh, which Ken's actually going to show you that as well. Um, so if you're into in programming or doing a tiny bit of coding, it would be this 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 one parameter that you would change to yes. But it's even better than that because Ken's going to show you how you can take your current print jobs right now, the Zebra ones, and using actually Print Transformer, you can actually create a rule. Anyone can do this, no programming at all, and say, you know what, instead of sending this to the Zebra printer and it's ZPL and all that stuff, send it as a Sato output to the Sato printer and also, you know, duplex it. So he's gonna, so this is showing here how you can create a rule. He's gonna again show you that uh, in real time. And I'll just move through my slides here, and we're going to get a little bit into, again, more e-commerce type stuff. Um, a lot of you are familiar with Formweaver. It's part of Mark Magic. Uh, it's one of the options where you can actually, if you watch these little different colors pop up, at print time, Mark Magic can actually grab multiple formats from, from your system and combine them onto one form. So you can have different uh, return labels and shipping labels just alternate from page to page. And you can also even duplex here as well and print like terms and conditions on the back. So that's on the form side of, thing, of things. Of course, you can PDF all this as well and send it out as, as an email or save it and archive it. Um, and just to be a little nostalgic, folks, on the AS400 side with Mark Magic, um, back in, it was actually 2000, I think it was 2010, WM 2010, or maybe it was still PKMS back then, I'm not sure. But you guys already have like integration for Formweaver. So this is actually uh, one of their screens, Flexible Reports Profile Maintenance. So if you're familiar with that within WM, this is where they actually integrated this Formweaver idea. And all that is, is really saying, it's just an interface where you could say, you know, which of the formats in Mark Magic I want to combine. Here's another page here. And what are the offsets I want to I, I want them to be? Or am I going to rotate that shipping label down at the bottom and how high off the, from the top? So they have a whole interface. It's already in there. You guys already own this. You don't have to buy anything. So um, just something to keep in mind. And all you folks on running Mark Magic PI, there's a way to, to handle all this as well with with Inform Weaver. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And I think I want to my last slide. And this is where we just wanted to share a little bit uh, about some recent accounts that have gone with, started using Mark Magic PI within the scale product mix, um, which uh, the one in particular, uh, Revman, we actually have a case study going, going out shortly uh, related to them. Um, and just all they had to do was really within scale itself, apparently there's this override wave. Um, they added one override to it. And then they created a Mark Magic. They used our Mark Magic print monitor, which is basically just looking at a folder or a file on their network for the data that's coming from this step. 
and it's completely automated. They're they're printing labels or PDFing them and all that because then they use Print Transformer to, to do some more things. So we're just going to show you a tiny bit about uh, how, how that works. Um, and again, feel free to ask questions. I am going to now make Mr. Hunter the presenter. <laughs> Remember everything I just told you, he's now going to actually show you like in more detail. <laughs> and again, please feel free to send some questions. I'll be monitoring that that part of the uh, the chat. Go oh, ahead, Ken. All right. All right, great, yeah. So um, I'm, I'm signed into JMagic right now, our GUI designer tool, and I've got one of those uh, zebra labels open. Uh, pretty famous one, ship label 01. Everyone's probably seen this one. Uh, so just to show you my, my JMagic here, I've got one of the many zebra labels that uh, Chuck was mentioning. If I go to open, you can see I've got a huge list here of all the uh, different labels that Manhattan's already designed for you, and you get and you get you get all these whenever you get Mark Magic uh, with uh, Manhattan's uh, WM, WMOS or WMI. So a uh, large collection of zebra labels for you. So, but we were talking about was being able to take these existing zebra labels, and you want to print on that new Sato printer. So rather than oh, having it's to, it's not really new. It's kind of old. New for everyone here. Oh, <laughs> it's good. <sure. laughs> So the Sato driver that uh, we've been mentioning to you uh, to be able to print on the front and back. Uh, so I'll take one of these Zebra labels and copy it over to our Zebra driver, or a Sato driver, excuse me. Uh, so JMagic will do format, copy. And I'm just going to pick my Zebra label that I want. I will do the ship label 01. Keep it in the same library. And you can see, I pulled on the list here, you know, what driver do I want to copy it to? And you can see all the bunch of different Zebra drivers, and there's a whole bunch of other Mark Magic drivers too. And it's the Sato GY412T. That's the driver in Mark Magic that the uh, all the Sato code is going to come out of now. So I've copied over to that new driver. I'll keep the, the format name the same. Let it do its thing. So we have the shipping label copied, and why not also copy the carton content label? So we'll just format copy from the Zebra driver, carton content, where is it? And these are all the labels that they've designed for you. Here it is, carton contents, mark back data, keep everything in the same library, and copy it over to GY412 again. Keep the name the same. Yeah, so I've just, copied two of my most popular Zebra labels over to Sato. And they're out there available to print now. I can open one of those up, format open. There's the two Sato. There's all the rest of those Zebra ones that we saw before. So Sato, uh, ship label 01, we'll open that one up. Looks fine. So there's one thing too that uh, if you remember seeing on the previous slide, uh, you know, these are four by six labels. As you can see here on the Sato printer, though, they use the five inch by eight inch label. So, you know, a little tweak here that you'd have to do. Uh, you may also need to edit, uh, make, you know, a small tweak here or there to font size, maybe some positioning or what have you. But um, the big thing here is go in and switch the label to eight by five now and hit OK on that one. Yep. And you can see it just gives you more room to work with. Obviously, then we need to put everything centered so easy in JMagic. I mean, just grab everything and drag it. There, boom, ready to go. That's it. Did I do a good job of explaining that for the folks? Just on the label stack itself, it's really minor, but on the Sato printer, since it prints on the back as well, it actually has this border around it that you peel off the adhesive, and so it has to be wider. So that's why it's five by eight. That's a very common uh, piece or, or label stock that we've seen. So yeah, and you've already updated the format. It's ready to go. Okay. Yep. Yep. So now it's uh, printing a little bit bigger. Still six by four in the middle, but you need to make the size bigger in Mark Magic uh, so that it uh, centers properly. So we, you know, I'll, you'd have to do the same thing to the carton content one, but um, not going to go there right now. Just to want to show you how you implement this kind of these kind of labels now. And there's you know many different ways. Obviously, you could you know change the programming on your side if you really want to dig into all that and start digging through code and rewriting things. But if you want Mark Magic to handle all that for you, uh, you can have it all done in Print Transformer. Uh, Add-on option here. If you go into J Magic, 
uh, you can access the GUI for that. And I, I can handle all that with just a simple rule set. So NJMagic is the interface to create and manage your print transformer rule sets. And I've got one created out here already that um, handles um, detecting, first of all, if it should even be a SATO output. Uh, and if it is, switch everything to SATO, use the new formats that I just made, turn on duplexing. So if I look in the rule set here, there's uh, two things happening. First of all, the uh, ch uh, checking to see you know, if it should even print SATO. So if I look at the front label here, if we look at the first rule, it's testing actual data that's coming in from the application. It's saying, you know, there's a field on the format called version. Um, and it's it's blank all the regular time, you know, if you're printing zebra labels, but when you want to print the SATO stuff, the word e-commerce shows up in the data. So we're looking for that, you know, in this case, it could be different, you know, uh, when, when you want to do it. Your certain, side, you know, maybe it's only when I ship to the certain customer or if it's, if it's a direct yeah. consumer, if there's something within your label data that, you know, we can use as a test or as a trigger, then all this will come true. And keep in mind, this could be just like your regular wave that you're printing. You're not, you wouldn't change anything. You're printing, printing a wave of labels. Yeah. Print time, this rule will actually look through the data. I'm like, oh, all right, these, you know, these 500 labels have to print, but these six over here, you know, intermix through it will actually have to go to the SATO printer or to somewhere else, really, go any place you want. But that's what Ken is showing, where it's just totally like seamless. Yeah, so the rule is testing, looking for the word e-commerce. If it finds that, it says, oh, this label needs to be SATO. So it actually goes in and changes the print parameters. So, you know, the, your Manhattan application is still calling Mark Magic with the command that would normally print a zebra label, one zebra label to one zebra printer somewhere out there. Except now we're stepping in and saying, hey, okay, we're going to do a little bit extra processing. Let's see. Oh, this is a SATO one. Swap the driver to SATO. Swap the format name to ship LVL01. And switch the destination printer to the SATO duplex printer. Mm -hmm. and there's you know, one other thing, too, that you would need to do is actually turn on duplexing. Yeah. So you can add a new action to say, hey, enable duplex. Yes. So the rule is swapping everything to Sato and turning on duplex. And that handles the front. You know, we're dealing with duplex, so we need to swap a different label on the back. And this rule set's using uh, one of our uh, nifty little extras in the, um, uh, the print transformer rules, which is called and rules. It allows you to basically print again, run a, run a totally new print command against the same set of data. So it's print once and print again, just fire off two labels from one print call basically. And that second label can be swapped on the back uh, using the duplex that we just turned on er earlier. And if we look in this rule, it's basically just saying always, there's a, there's a test to say always, so you don't have to really test anything and worry if it's true or not, because you always want that back one to be carton content. So you swap in the format name to carton content, printer type, the driver is SATO, and then that destination printer is the SATO printer. And we don't need to turn on duplex again. It's already enabled in that first rule. First one. So they'll print on the front and the back. You know, I got a quick question here, actually, uh, Ken. Question is, will this work with other drivers like Monarch or Avery? So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So everything Ken is showing, yes, will actually work, except the duplexing part. I don't believe Monarch Ravi <laughs> actually have a thermal printer that they will print on the back. Uh, but certainly, you, everything Ken just showed, instead of printing on the back, it will just print on the second label. So you can intermix formats or, or totally change where things are going from this, you know, Zebra, which Zebras are great printers, by the way. Uh, from the Zebra over to, to the Monarch, you can, you can do all that. Yes. Oh, yeah, and the tests are, you know, you can test all sorts of things, you know, time of day, date, if it's after 8 p.m., start sending things out to a different printer out in the back of the warehouse rather than in front. So mm -hmm. the rule sets are almost limitless uh, with, mm -hmm. with what you can do with it, testing and all the different things you can change about the rule, yep. about your print job. So yep. this one, um, and even for just enabling duplex, you know, there's many ways to do it. This one, I just said, okay, how am I going to do it? I'll use an and rule. Why not? Let's try it because I know I need the front and back. And mm -hmm. it works. It's great.
Yeah, we're just taking a tiny piece of what print transformer can do and and oh, yeah. blending in with this with the saddle printer, um, but it can do a ton more. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's that's that for the Sato. Um, I'm gonna transition over to uh, the the second topic we we're mentioning about the form weaver. Let me minimize this, J Magic here. So another e-commerce type thing, or at least that's where we're seeing it. You can use these these functions within Mark Magic for anything. We're not gonna, you know, strap you into just e-commerce, but that's where we see these functions and features used mostly. Oh yeah. So this is you know what we call a, a form weaver. I like I to call it a complex document, if you will, but it's basically just a combination of a bunch of smaller mark magic formats each individual format so everything you see outlined here is a is a different mark magic format designed uh, these ones are designed under a zebra driver and then at print time the mark magic form weaver command combines them all together onto one printed laser printer page so uh, you know, i'll put this one to the side here and then show you i've got my j magic this is just one format i've got it open down here it's just that's just the top format uh, the uh, the image, the header image. So why would they have more than one format on the top? I don't know, if they needed a different company's logo. You can just say, hey, print, you know, Acme bicycle at the top. And mm -hmm. you just, you know, call up, you know, Acme header three format yep. rather than PB header. Okay. Yeah, I've seen some accounts with like five or six different like header parts or any of these parts that then get intermixed automatically yeah. at print time because it would be impossible to keep track of all the combinations of things that they have, especially if they're having promotions and things like that and a different label gets brought in. So rather than having like five different giant busy formats all with all the information on one page, you just say, hey, print the different one at the top and keep all the other ones, all the different puzzle pieces the same. So here's the um, you know the the packing side. This is just this this orange section here, mm -hmm. and that's just this format. And if you can you know look further on, we've got um, uh, the address section here. We'll open this one. This section in green is just this Mark Magic format. So there's five different formats here that they've designed, including the existing for it ship label. So this is the uh, UPS uh, standard ground shipping label that you guys are very well uh, aware of and, and used to. And this is the actual Zebra one too, that you're probably printing hundreds and thousands of these a day. Uh, and we're just using the same exact format. And we're able to actually take it and you can see, place it on this page, rotate it, move it up and down. There's offsets and move it, move it up an inch, move it over an inch. Uh, rotate it 90 or 270, you know, whatever you want to piece this format together. So it's it's, like, it's not like you have to design a totally new uh, UPS label for, for a laser printer or what have you. This all gets converted to laser on the fly. So this is the the exact Zebra ZTZ 140XI12 ship label U2 label that you're used to printing all day every day. So uh, and it's now on a form thanks to Form Weaver, rotated, placed exactly where you need it, pieced together to make this Form Weaver document uh, with different images at the top, depending on whatever company that uh, you wanna show at the time. So yeah, Form Weaver can piece together and make some really awesome looking forms. You saw on the slide earlier, that was a, uh, <laughs> It's even better looking for them. There's, I think there's three labels down there at the bottom of that one. So mm -hmm. uh, really cool stuff. Yeah, so when it's a FedEx one, you just swap the FedEx one on the bottom and keep everything else the same. So really neat. So yeah, that's Form Weaver for you. Uh, and before you, mad you, or not? Yeah, I was gonna, before you switch subjects, we got a question. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read the question. This is verbatim. It's kind of, kind of a long one. Starts off with hi, it's very nice of you to say hi. I have a oh. que query on rules. In the PKMS WM, we have destination printer setup with the warehouse and workstation ID. While rule setup was shown earlier, we'll always send particular f format to one printer. That was you sent it to that saddle printer all the time. Only irrespective of where it printed from, like the workstation. Or do we have a way to handle the same on the JMagic side? So, I mean, my short answer is you could totally uh, use rules to change where the output is going. Um, 
based off the variable data coming in. It doesn't always have to go to the same printer. It could be any printer you want based off the data coming in, based off the time of day. We have customers doing that after five o'clock. You know what, send it to this other printer because this other one is shut down. Um, but even based off the customer information or the user information, all that is available to test against. So hopefully that answered your question, but I'd be yeah. more than happy to, uh, do you want to add anything, Ken? Yeah, actually, another neat thing too, if, if you notice in that rule is I, I basically hard coded the printer name, the mm -hmm. destination name, uh, to you know where to send the Sato output to. I hard coded the Sato printer name in in the rule. Um, if you even wanted to, you could have it look and retrieve the printer name, the destination printer name from your data. So you can pass mm -hmm. which printer you want the stuff to go to right in your data, and mm -hmm. we'll grab it. Um, right out of the file and use that as the printer name, destination name. So you can control which printer it goes to on a record by record basis. So. Yep. Yeah, you can burst them apart and split them and send to this printer, some to that printer, some to this Monarch printer, one to the Zebra printer, some over the Saddle printer. It's really, uh, you can go on. Mm -hmm. I can go on and on about print transformers. So yeah. I don't want to get too sucked in. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I've done whole day trainings just on that print transformer piece. It's a lot of stuff, but it's uh, super powerful and uh, you know, very handy. So let me minimize this too. We can okay. complete yeah. the form weaver part here for you. Hope you like that. So, and then we'll just uh, talk Did about the back how, uh, of that. I'm sorry, we're gonna show the back. Oh, geez, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Little sorry. surprise piece. Oops, wrong J Magic. <laughs> I got a different one here with uh, the UPS label here. Yeah, uh, that company also. Uh, they they made that awesome form with everything on the front that you saw there, uh, a bunch of different formats all pieced together. And they also used, we're talking about duplex, you know, we're loving duplex today. They used uh, a duplex feature to be able to say, also put this uh, back format on. And it's, you know, a bunch of uh, handy return instructions for the, for the users to fill out uh, and mail back if they need to. So this is just a document they've typed up. Um, all different uh, header fields here that they've whipped up and lines and text fields. So this goes on the back of that form weaver document that you saw. There you go. Duplexed on the back. Yep. The back. yep. Very cool. So it's doing a lot of stuff. It's combining all these different formats on the front and then it's, it's, it's grabbing, grabbing another format to print on the back, you know, because this laser printer in this case is a duplex uh, capable one. Absolutely. So we're on to our final subject, which is good because we're down to three minutes, which has to do with just a little taste of like what, like a, like a scale account, how they how they got Mark Magic PI going to print their labels. Like where they they were initially using basically, you know, what I consider hard coded ZPLs. So they're taking the ZPL and there's variables in there, and they're bringing the data in through scale through scale and printing out the labels, which has worked out well for years, but got to the point where they had so many formats that it, it was just getting harder to maintain. And they also happened to have um, accounts where they wanted to be able to PDF and email these, not necessarily print the labels, in their case, on the Zebra printer. So Mark Magic was a perfect answer for all those scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, so for them, they, you, they made that one change that I showed earlier in the screenshot within scale itself. And then are you logging in here, Ken? Yeah. Okay. And then logging. within mark magic pi like this is the web interface which some of you may not have seen before but um we can do all kinds of neat stuff but they actually used our print monitor so that's that option okay go ahead i know you're gonna show other stuff sorry i'll stop talking go ahead Ken. <laughs> okay yeah no problem um yeah so i've got mark magic basically hosted as a web application um, on my pc here um, i'm basically accessing Mark Magic like a web page, signing in. And um, there's a lot of administrative stuff here. You defined your, pr you defined printers here. You um, install the license, you can access some help docs here. But um, the main thing that we're talking about here is using the Mark Magic print monitor uh, to set up basically just a folder monitor. Mark Magic's just always looking at a folder on my server for text files that show up. And you configure that through this web GUI here. Um, and you're, I'm just saying, hey, Mark Magic, um, can you just always keep an eye on this UCC128 folder uh, out there on my server? And anytime a text file shows up in it, and it's that text file is basically just raw data uh, in, in rows of raw data that's gonna go on to your labels. 
uh, and we catch it. And we catch that text file and drop, that gets dropped in uh, from your program, just creates the raw data text file out there. We process it and then based on, basically set up um, a mark magic job it's it's sort of just like a predefined print command with all the the necessary um, values in it to be able to create the output you want you know is this a pdf is it a is it a print going to a certain printer it's like that's what a job is it's just uh, set up ahead of time so mark magic can just easily call it up and fire it away so uh, this monitor is looking at a folder i've got a folder out here here's that folder d drive ucc 128 uh, and this Empty. particular job, uh, this particular job basically creates PDFs for me. Um, and I'll, if you want to look at the data real quick, it's you know just just to see. Yeah, there's, so, a, there's a bunch of stuff going on. I was Sorry, say the, uh, the, yeah, the, the, this in particular account, this Revmin is the is the company. They actually shared some of their data with us, so this is just a little piece of it. And this is and this is just all they did was like here's the scale data as a text file. This was like the integration. Here's here's the data as a text file that we want to print for our wave, and they dump it in and like here, put it in this directory on their network, and we're and then Mark Magic just takes over after that. And in their yeah. case, they're actually creating PDFs, but it could send it to the Zebra printer and print out, or or PDF and email and print to a labor, uh, thermal printer, all of the above. So this is basically using rules to detect uh, the file name here. So they're they're providing the file name. Anything that has a common file name, see these end in four, there's a bunch here that end in one. So these will, these will all be grouped up into their own PDFs. So we're gonna take this data, you know, pretend I'm the, the scale program, <laughs> copying and pasting, no, it's, it's just, it create, creates it in the folder and we find it, oops, wrong one. Paste it into the monitored folder. And if we take a peek over here, they're generating. PDFs are so being created. There you go. The monitor sees that text file. It's grabbing it, processing it. In their case, they're actually bursting them into, into just three PDFs. Um, and then you can see the actual file got deleted afterwards. We got rid of it afterwards, a text file. But yeah, so this you know, could be sent to a printer, or here's the PDFs of all these different labels that are being created. You can swap in multiple formats. Like you see that there's the first one, the header. You can swap in all kinds of different ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. It's, and it's fantastic. So you can archive those and, and, and so on. So, um, and I was, the, the performance is like unbelievable. I mean, I did some, we did some initial tests for them just to make sure everything's cool. Just on the PDFing side, I mean, the printing is wicked fast. I mean, the printers can't keep up with it. But even on the PDFing, I mean, they do multiple, like several thousand pages at a time. And it was four, three to four milliseconds per page as far as getting created. So in a matter of a few seconds, you have thousands of pages created, which I thought was kind of neat. That's a little extra tidbit. I wasn't planning on sharing that with you guys, um, but I think that's all we had, Ken. Yeah. We're three minutes over. All right. I love it. All right. There's a few questions. I will get back. Actually, there's two. I'll get back to you guys uh, separately, um, but by all means, please, you can email sales at cyber.com or help at cyber.com with any question of any type, and we will get back to you with an answer. And again, if you folks, uh, Lucky enough to be out in Phoenix next week. Uh, please stop by and, and see uh, Aaron and myself at the Cybra Pod. Thanks again for your time and have a great day. So long. Thank you.